thank him for his faithfulness thank him for his awesomeness thank him for leading us out safely and bringing us back safely tonight thank him for all the mercies we have received throughout the day thank him thank him thank him bless his name father we glorify your name because you are good to us thank you daddy because there is no one like you thank you for your faithfulness thank you daddy thank you daddy for all the good you have we have received throughout today be exalted O lord in jesus name somebody say father ah father i have come to learn at your feet tonight holy spirit divine come and teach me O lord in the mighty name of jesus reveal yourself to me and you and afresh O lord in the mighty name of jesus more than any man can teach daddy more than any man can teach father come and teach me in jesus name pray the prayer pray the prayer pray that prayer in jesus mighty name we have prayed somebody let's be seated a round of applause for jesus god bless you brethren we are continuing tonight with the seven examples of principalities don't forget it's a long journey we started some months ago talking about prayer we looked at prayers and prayer then we now began to look at the prayer enhancers those things that people think make prayers to get answered we move from there to begin to look at those people whose mere desires thoughts or words are more powerful than prayers we say those are the principalities and don't forget i describe principalities to us as people men and women boys and girls who understand how principles work and they now use the principles they take hold of the principles and use it they can use it for the benefit of themselves and people around them and they may use it against people around them or even themselves too the lord will bless us in jesus name so we looked at the examples of these principalities we look at the examples we started by looking at noah all of us remember the story of uncle noah genesis chapter number six from verse five to three we looked at how noah gathered all the animals into the ark he built the ark nobody has ever done that kind of a thing before a a house so to say that could float when water came the house that will not leak the house that could accommodate eight people and all animals in the world and he did it because the bible says in chapter 6 genesis that noah found grace we move from noah to uncle moses uncle moses we looked at the things that happened in his life the children of that akora and abiram what they did and what befell them afterwards i pray that will not happen to us in jesus name i told you no uh, moses carried raw grace and power somebody may you carry grace uh -uh, i can't hear the amen may you carry grace now we move to, from there to number three joshua uh uncle joshua he changed nation uh, nature he told the son to stand still upon a mountain and he stretched the sword also to the, the moon and told that one too to stand still and it was so and the bible recorded it genesis joshua chapter number 10 from verse number 3 to 15. he said it never happened in the history of this world that a man will speak so and god will honor it he said it has not happened before and it has not happened since that day for somebody to tell the sun yeah, stay here and moon stay and it was so those are principalities people who understood how principles work and they now employ those principles to work for them somebody may you carry grace in the mighty name of jesus today we are moving to gideon we have touched it uh slightly last monday gideon the book of judges chapter number six from verse number one to 14 gideon a principality 
This man was a young man. The whole nation was suffering under the yoke of the Midianites at that time. You see, brethren, let me quickly tell us this. No matter where you came from, no matter the challenge that is prevailing in that place where you came from, if you just connect grace, if you just make God to trust you, you can turn anything around. I mean anything, as in anything. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Let's read. Judges chapter number 6 from 1 to 14. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Midianites, of the Midian, or of Midian, seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Praise the Lord. Ah, praise the Lord. Oh. You see, when many Christians don't know, when the enemies prevail over you, check your level of obedience. Check your relationship with your God. Praise the Lord. When things are happening against you, all these are prayer of battle, battle, enemy in my father's house, enemy in my mother's house. So, many of these people that are enemies are actually acquired enemies. Of course, you remember I told you, everything in life has its own natural enemy. Everything in life has its own natural enemy. But, you see, a natural enemy is not the same as an acquired enemy. An acquired enemy is somebody you went to invite, to court, to say, come, be my enemy. And the best and easiest way to do that is to move away from where God wants you to be. Move away from the presence of God. Because the Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy. So in his absence, what happens? There is fullness of calamity. I pray calamity will not prevail in our life in Jesus' name. So they sinned against God and God used the Midianites as Koboko, Pankere, to whip them. That's it. So when children of God sin against God, God leaves them to the devil or their enemies, devil's agents. Because God has moved out, those people can now have a field day over that person. I pray to not be so in your life in Jesus' name. But you too run away from sin. And Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens which are in the mountains and caves. They became animals. They made dens. They could not live in their cities again. They went to go and find holes inside caves, inside mountains, and be living. That's what is happening in the life of many Christians too. They could not live in the palace that their father gave them anymore. They begin to live as refugees. Some of us, even inside churches, we are living as refugees because we are not the kind of princes and princesses that God wants us to be. The Lord will show us mercy in Jesus' name. And in strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come into Gaza. You see Gaza is coming up here again. Gaza, very popular place. And left no sustenance for Israel. Neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents. And they came as grasshoppers for multitude. The farmers, praise the Lord. Every farmer fear grasshoppers. Especially if you are a crop farmer. Because grasshoppers can't fly. Yes. They come with the wind. So wherever the wind drops them, they stay there. They will eat up everything green for the period when they are there. And without, they came without invitation. The day they are going to, they don't send text message. They don't send when in one note. Once the wind that will take them away comes, they go with it again to another place. So every farmer fear them because you, there is no way you can't deal with them when they come to your farm. Especially in those days when you could not use chemicals. There were no chemicals to use. Once they come, they have come. And they wipe off everything. And you and I know that 
What sustains the plant is the green part of it. Do you know that? That's what sustains it. Uh, what do you call this thing? Uh, photosynthesis. <laughs> so that's what sustains it. Without, the, without that green part of it, photosynthesis cannot take place. Without photosynthesis, the plant will not grow. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. So they came as grasshopper for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number. And they entered into the land and destroyed it. The Lord will ha have mercy on us in Jesus' name. You see, when you tell people about Devorah, they think that Devorah is something that is very large. That when it's coming, you can run. You know, like a tank, armor tank coming towards you. You know it will be making noise. So you'll be able to hide. They think that's how Devorah is. That's not so. It is incipient. It comes very little, like this, and begin to grow bigger. Just like water seeping into your house, little by little. Before you know what is happening, if you are not careful, it will take over the entire house. That's how it is. Devora, may we not experience it in Jesus' name. And Israel greatly, Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet. Look at, the people cried. The Lord did not fight. God was supposed to come and do what? And fight. But he didn't fight. He sent a prophet. They cried. God answered. They didn't see anything. But a prophet came. And they will ask God, you didn't answer us. God will say, I have answered. Many of us, the prayer we have prayed, that look as if God did not answer. Are you really sure God has not? He might have sent a prophet to you. Yes. He might have sent a prophet to you in your little daughter. He might have sent a prophet to you in your little son, in your husband, in your wife. But he doesn't look like answer to you. It might have, he might have sent a prophet to you in your pastor. But it doesn't look like an answer to you. You want your own kind of answer. You want an answer that qualifies as an answer in your own eyes. You've forgotten that his ways are not our ways. When people were crying in the house of Laban, Ah, Lord Jesus, ah, don't allow this man to die. Hey, Lord Jesus, he answered them. He did. He said he was not dying, that he was going to about, he was about sleeping. When he actually died, he said he slept. Is that not so? And even the disciples said, Ah, say we want to go and wake him up. Thomas said, we are going to die with him. Because it was a very hopeless situation. But God does not reason that way. He doesn't. He's not man. He's not man. One of our videos in the YouTube is God's answer, man's answer. God's answer, man's answer. They are two opposing, two different things entirely. Praise the Lord. And the day Jesus got there, he told them that this man is not sleeping. He said, if you stand firm, you will see the glory of the Lord. And truly, truly, they saw it, even though they were not expecting that kind of a glory. Praise the Lord. So, they prayed. God answered. He answered them by sending one prophet. Not two, not ten. Do you know that? Come and see God. Come and see. Come and see. Let's go. He sent the prophet unto the children of Israel. We said unto them, Thus said the Lord, God of Israel. If at the point when this man was giving this prophecy, he, was, he had to be very careful. In fact, he must wear a crash helmet like Okadao or those soldiers steel helmet. Because he said, Thus said the Lord, God of Israel. They will ask him, Which God? God of who? That did what? <laughs> are, are you blind? <laughs> You don't see what is happening to you. You say we have one God somewhere. 
See, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. They say, it's on the year, it's on the And that story. Make you talk about that thing. This thing, they pay us all well, a day now. You see, I brought you from where? We know that one already. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drove them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Just picture this man. Picture yourself as an Israelite in the marketplace one afternoon when you just came out from that cave like 200, 300 of you just came out from that cave watching your right on your left to see whether the Midianites were coming. You were just looking for what to eat. You understand? One prophet now came carrying one useless bell. Now he came back around. Say, don't say the Lord. <laughs> that day. <laughs> that day. If the guy happened to get back home at all, <laughs> if we get back home in half or one quarter, because people would tear him to pieces. But the ways of the Lord, the ways of the Lord, as he was delivering this message, the message the millionaire did not come. Everywhere was calm. He told them a very long story. <laughs> and they listened. He said, Fear not the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. They will say, eh, atibo, atibo, eh, itumo. Is equal to what? See, and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Oprah. The prophet came, he spoke, an angel came. Sequence. God is a Methodist. Praise the Lord. Which was in Ophrah. That pertained unto Joash the Abizrite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press. Wheat, you thresh it on the threshing floor. Wine, you take it to the wine press. Wine press is like a bucket. It's deep uh, stone. So it's not convenient to thresh wheat there. But Tianti Ban, I want to buy there already. The Midianites had impoverished them. So they couldn't thresh their wheat in the open. Praise the Lord. To hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord, ah, look at disaster. <laughs> Somebody that is a sufferer. Say, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of the law. A weakling, a victim, an impoverished man, a man that is in pains. God did not see those pains. God saw what he made that man to be. You are looking at yourself very small. Looking at yourself inconsequential. Looking at yourself that you don't matter. Looking at yourself that you are poor. God is not seeing you, the poor. God is not seeing you, the victim. Many a time, God is seeing you, the giant. But how will the you that you see transform to become the you that God sees? Two things. Faith. Obedience. That's all. What is faith? The conviction you have that God will do that which he promised you. Obedience. Surrendering your will to his will. Surrendering your understanding to his instruction. Your education, your intellect, your whatever, to his instruction. Fine, you are a geographer. But God told you that the water he wants to give you is going to be rain from under the ground. And you know it was not possible. But God said, put bowl outside. <laughs> and you are a geographer. You dare not say that to your professor. He will fail you in that exam. But that is what God says. 
And if you don't do it, you will get only the reign of your professor, not the one of God. If your professor can give rain, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Thou mighty, mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if God, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of? Saying, Did the Lord not bring us from Egypt? But now, the Lord has forsaken us. Tell your neighbor, the Lord has not forsaken you. Tell him again, the Lord has not forsaken you. Even you are not sure. God bless you. God has not forsaken us. God has not forsaken us. The challenge we are having, Christians, is that the God we understand is different from the God of the Bible. The God we understand is the God that looks like the one the world is describing. It is the instant God of the world. The God inside movies that can make somebody who is barren to give birth and the child comes out of university in two seconds. You know in Hollywood now, a barren woman, a barren woman, we just go to one juju man and the next scene, our daughter will be coming out from the university with youth, uh, youth core uniform. That's the kind of God that we know. And our God is not like that. Our God is not like that. He follows process. That was the reason. He didn't tell Sarah that I will be back next week and you will have a son. Say, I'll be back according to the time of life by next year and you will have a son. Our God is not an instant God. If you want to do any crusade now, if you do instant miracle, ha, people will come. 24 hours miracle. So, some people even six hours miracle. People will come. And three years down the line, they are still waiting for the 24 hour miracle. So we have disappointed a lot of them and they don't understand the kind of God we are talking about. Is pastor saying that God cannot do miracle in 10 seconds? He can, even in one second. But it is not in all cases. Some things, even if you receive the miracle in one second, it will die in your hand. Like somebody giving birth to a baby in a second and she had not been pregnant before. Praise the Lord. Well, it's possible. She could buy as forsaken us, and deliver us into the hand of the Midianite. And the Lord looked upon him. The Lord looked upon him. The Lord looked upon him. The angel of the Lord looked at him. What the angel of the Lord was seeing was different from what this guy saw. The Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. <laughs> he saw himself having no might. He saw himself having no power. But the angel of the Lord was talking about a might that was in him, which he never saw. Are we still together? Yes. Somebody here tonight. Yes, God is looking at you. He is calling you a captain. And you are looking at yourself. See? Is he talking to somebody and he's talking about you? You remember the story of the captain in the Napoleon the Army Parade? You remember that story I told you? Yes. You know, he was a corporal. He helped the emperor steady his horse so that the emperor, the emperor does not die. That the horse will not throw the emperor off and the emperor will break his neck and die. And the emperor said, Thank you, Captain. Merci, Captain. And the guy marched to the rank of the captains and stood there. And the captains were angry with him. 
But he was happy with himself. That if I'm going to die, let me die obeying the emperor. Somebody obey your God. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Ah. And thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have. Look at it. Where is the. You see? Have I not. Please read it. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Have I not sent thee? So you are going there on my behalf. I have not I sent thee. You are going there on my behalf. So as Gideon will be marching into the front, he will be marching. We are jumping to the, verse 36. Verse 36. As Gideon will be marching into the front, he will be marching as an angel. Yes, a representative of that angel. So let's jump to 36. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, this is a man that conducted a test for God. Principalities are very, very strange people. Somebody could invite God, say, Yeah, come and write this exam. <laughs> and he gave him paper, gave him pen. So, yeah, right. Praise the Lord. Because that's the way it looks to me. If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon the earth, all the earth beside. Let me explain this thing to us. The fleece is the, the air from a sheep. He will collect it, put it on the floor. Now, when dew come, dew is the one that come by night, that wet everywhere. When dew come, and if your, your, your dew will come, will come on this place alone, and not, and not on the surrounding ground, ground, I will know you have, you have something. something. Then, let me read it again. Let me read it again. I will, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand. He was already afraid. And the only thing he could do was to do this kind of examination. This is a mid-term test that he did for God. Mid-term. That he did for God. And said, I said, and it was so. For he rose up early on the morrow and thrust the fleece together and wringed dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto, the, unto God, Let not thine hunger come and take test number two, God. Let not thine hunger be hot against me. And I will speak, but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once again. I took it again by myself. Oh, with the fleece. Let it be the dry only upon the fleece. And upon all the ground, let there be dew. And God did so that night. For it was dry upon the fleece only. And there was dew on all the ground. A human being that tested God. I don't dare try that kind of a thing. <laughs> I don't think whether you have the power to do that. To tell God, yeah, God, take paper. Or God, tear a sheet of paper. <laughs> Write your name, your number, your matric number, and your class. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> do this test for me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, but you see, it's a function of relationship. Did you hear me? It is a function of relationship. When you have a relationship that is strong enough with your God, you can ask him anything and he will do it for you. I mean anything. Praise the Lord. Samuel, his words never failed. As a result of the relationship that he had with God, for Samuel, chapter number 3, from verse number 12 to 19, for Samuel 3, 12 to 19. Please let me know if you have questions. I think we still have some time. 
but let me know so that we can I can stop early to take questions. I want us to take as many questions as possible. First Samuel 3, 12 to 19. In that day, this is God talking to Samuel. I will perform against Eli all the things I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. You see, I will stop, I will start destroying the house of Eli and I will end this, the destruction. For I have told him that I will judge his house. God had sent a prophet to Eli earlier. This is God talking to Samuel. His house forever. For the iniquity which he knoweth, he knows what he has done. Because his son made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. He was not responsible for his children's actions. Are we, t- are we together? God is not blaming you for the actions of your grown children. No. You can't kill them. But God will hold you responsible if you do not stop them from doing what they are doing. Stopping them from doing what they are doing as much as your power can. You can remove them from the office where they occupy. Put other people there. Are we together? He is not expecting you to cut off their neck or gun them down. No. He's only expecting you to tell them, okay, hopefully I'm finished, Abby. This is how you want to disgrace yourself from today. Step down from this office. You, other person, you, other person, take over that office. You, you, take over this office. If they still refuse to behave themselves, punish them from the tabernacle. Let them be staying at home, not come to church. Very simple. If they refuse to change, Punish them from the house to let them find out they are big enough to find their own shelter. You understand? So God, some people will say, ah, it was not Eli that sinned. It was his children. Yes. It was his children. God is not holding you responsible for the act- actions of your grown children. It is when they are still young that you can do whatever you want to do. She, Ophni and Phineas that can carry Eli and beat him up. What will he have done? But he had the power to say from today, leave this particular office. Let another person take over that office. He had the power. The Lord bless. So be careful, parent. Be careful. You see, if you want to be a leader, a successful leader, never raise a prince. Never raise a princess. Don't allow, don't allow a prince in your house. Don't allow a prince in your a princess in your house. Don't allow it. You know what I mean by prince, princess? Somebody that is a spoiled person. That whatever he wants is what is done in that house. One day, one day, that person will make you an ally. That person will make that parent an ally. Every leader raise a disciple, not a prince, not a princess. What leaders raise is disciples. So your child, your son, your daughter must not be a prince, must be another disciple. Because if you cannot disciple your children, you can't successfully disciple other people's children. No. I be you know, no. They will be looking at your own now. What you are saying, if it is actually working, why is it not working for this one? Praise the Lord. It's like me, a pastor, and my wife is not coming to church. She's following maybe another religion, but she doesn't believe in what we believe in. Before I win you, I should win her first. That's, what it, that's how it follows. I now go to the woman, woman in the gap. And I begin to tell them how to be a good wife. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, would you like to sit under that kind of a teaching? <laughs> we like, how many of you would like women? Like to sit under that kind of a teaching? Say, I come to you, my wife is not here. You see her passing, doing one funny thing around. Go for a bit. You understand? Then say, how to be a good wife. Let us. <laughs> you will tell me, daddy, change this story. Do how to be a good husband. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're in verse 14. And therefore, I have sworn unto the house of Eli, Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice, 
No offering. For how long? Forever. It means that if Eli offers sin offering for himself, God will not accept it. If he gives choice sacrifice for his children, God will not accept it. This thing is what destroyed Abiata, the great great grandson of Eli, and uh, Adonijah, the son of Agit, son of uh, David. Adonijah wanted to be king. He conferred with Joab and accused. David caused him because he killed Abiata, uh, uh, Abner. Abner was his superior. He killed that one. He conferred with Abiata the priest. He conferred with all the dregs. Yes, sir. He did not confer with people that matter. Nathan. He did not confer with him. Solomon. If you have brought Solomon to that party, Solomon will have eaten rice and chicken. And when they shout, long live the king, Solomon will have shouted. And automatically, he had acceded the throne to his elder brother. Somebody be wise. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Pastor said, Bill, I say they digress too much, Abby. We're going to know this. We're going to let's move on. So, forever. And Samuel lay until morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli, Eli the vision. You know, God told him that in the vision. He was not afraid to tell Eli. Then Eli called Samuel. He was looking at Samuel. Say, this boy, he don't hear something. No one tell me. He called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, and he answered, here am I. And he said, what is the thing that the Lord had said unto thee, I pray thee? Hide it not from me. He now caused him. Say, God, do so to thee. And more so, if thou hide anything from me of all the thing that he said unto thee. He had laid a curse on Samuel. Samuel had no choice. Probably he was watching Samuel. Samuel was watching, was watching him with fear. When Baba wanted to look at Samuel, Samuel would take his eyes away. Look at him. He said, hey, this boy has had something. You know, he was the one that told Samuel how to answer God so that God will speak to him. He now called him. He now put one no bone get curse on him. See, if you don't tell me this thing, eh? this one, pia. Now the boy began to confess. Come and see. And Samuel told him every week and hid nothing from him because of the curse. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemed good. Cement him good. He said, God, let God do whatever he wants to do. He is the Lord. I have tried my best. And Samuel grew. And the Lord was with him. And did let none of his words fall to the ground. Whatever he says, God backs it. Anything he says, God backs it. Don't let any of his word fall to the ground. You want God to back up whatever you say. Build strong relationship with him. Very strong relationship. The reason why when we that call ourselves prophets, when we talk, say, this man, God has told me he will not be president and that will not become president. He's going to die tomorrow. He spent eight years in office. He's still there. People come and ask us, say, yeah, actually, when you read the story of Abracadabra inside the Bible, say, which one is Abracadabra? He says, he's a prophet. You will not know him now. He says, prophet Abracadabra. He says, I need to request him. Face your front. <laughs> Praise the Lord. First Samuel, chapter number 16. There are 13 verses we are reading here. First Samuel. I want you to look at relationship. Relationship is very, very important. In becoming a principality. And the Lord said, I'm reading from verse 1 to 13. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long he had, he had the Israelites had demanded for a king? Samuel had anointed Saul. Honestly, Samuel wanted Saul to, 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 to prosper. He wanted the kingdom to, because he had saved 
uh, Samuel from problem, trouble. You know why? Samuel was a priest, he was a prophet, he was a king, and a judge. Four offices. You understand? He was not crowned as a king, but he was ruling the country. So he was operating in the office of a ruler. So he wanted to, he was, he saw, now that people are now going to Saul, you understand? He, Baba was able to sleep very well in his house, more than ever before. The one that before he wake up, people have come and knock the door, Papa, 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 come and see, oh, there is problem, oh, and he say, in the city of uh, uh, Judah, see this one, slap this one, that one, no one slap the other one, they now began to fight, he will have to settle that one. Now, that one had gone to the king. All those judging, judging the people had gone to the king. The king could now come to him to seek counsel on behalf of the people. Do you understand now? So he was, okay, okay. I didn't like the idea, but since the people demanded it, and it was working, oh, ah, say, God, the thing is working, oh, I am now freer to serve you. Do you understand? So when Saul failed, Samuel was pained. He did not want him to fail. So he was now crying to God. And this is where God now turned. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? He was crying for him. God said he was mourning. You see now? Because he knew that when God removes you from his presence, that person is dead. He might still be moving around. Saul occupied that seat for about 20 years after carrying the regalia of a king and God said Samuel was mourning him. Do you know that? Some of us too, we are moving around eating amala, eating bread. We are not there. God does not regard us as being alive anymore. Because why? We are already too deep in sin than to hear the whistle of our master. We are lost. We are calling good evil and evil good. We are the people of the perilous times. Heady. Hmm? Stubborn. Selfish. Disobedient to everybody, not only to parents. So God is not. The Lord will have mercy on us. We mourn for Saul. Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. God rejected him from reigning and he was still in office. So many of us, that is why the Bible says, whosoever thinketh he standard, not that he standard, those of us that thinketh we standard, he said, take heed, lest he fall. So because he is not actually standing, he is falling, but he thinketh he standard. So, over Israel, fill thine own with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? Is that not disobedience? <laughs> Answer me now. Is that not disobedience? God say, Arise. Go to Yanopaja. Say, How can I go? That kind of Yanopaja. Ah, how can I go? <laughs> you understand? You see, if Saul hear it, he will kill me. But your people say, Etubano Nishela Abel, Rambel, Damaji Shefuna Abi. See, the person will send you a message. Now you didn't fear. You know, they fear the person where you won't go tell. Okay. If somebody tell you, maybe a soldier is carrying guns, say, Look, buy it here for me. <laughs> you will still make that proverb, Abi. Say, Go and slap that soldier for me. I'm sure you will tell, eh, I will go. But let him move away. I will slap his shadow. <laughs> if I were you, that's what I would say. I say, Don't worry. Let, I'm watching him. When he leaves, I will slap his shadow. If that one even catch you for slapping his own shadow, <laughs> you will do frog jump from here to Abuja. <laughs> My God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So he will kill me. And the Lord said, I want us to deal with this place. And somewhere said, verse 2, how can I go if Saul here, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. 
Was he going to sacrifice? Well, you can answer it. Was he going to anoint king? You can answer it too. I know you thought we will ask questions. If you don't ask, well, now you shall be. But I'm waiting for the questions. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Ah, God is wonderful. I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And he called Jesse to the sacrifice. And called Jesse to the sacrifice. That was the instruction. And I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that, that which the Lord spoke. And he came to Bethlehem. This is where I will stop this story of Samuel. And the elders of the town did what? Oh, I can't hear you. Trembled at his coming and said, Come, thou peaceably. Praise the Lord. Why did the elders of Bethlehem tremble? Why not the children? Why not the people of Bethlehem? Why not the men of Bethlehem? Why not the women of Bethlehem? Why the elders? Those people who have experience. Is that not so? Who have known Samuel from Samuel's own childhood? No, be so. Some of them will be older than Samuel. They have known Samuel from his childhood. They know that when Samuel enters your city, God's touchlights is on that city. Then you say, hey, Wahala has come. We don't know what we have done. Whether it is good or bad, let us, everybody will leave whatever they are doing. They say, they just go, hey, man, hey, hey, Mazi, Anoka. Papa Samuel, don't come. Mazi will leave his farm, start running down. You understand? And everybody gathered. The Bible said they trembled because they have seen God in the life of Samuel over the years. They have seen things that Samuel has done over the years. That was why they trembled. He was a man of unequaled integrity. A man of unequaled integrity. A man whom God supports. A man whom God backs up. A principality. Praise the Lord. So he got there. And they started bringing Jesse's sons. They brought Elia. They brought Abinadab. Uh, he was looking at them. He first of all even wanted to make a mistake with Elia. He saw Elia, combat hardened soldier. You know those guys in a MP, military police. They tried again. Mark like very tall. He was looking at him like that. But God said, no, this is not the guy. He may look combat ready, but I have rejected him. In fact, God did not say I reject him. He said, I have refused him. <laughs> so he may want to enter. Let's read it. And he said, peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourself. He even told them, go and sanctify yourself, all of you. All of them will run to their house. Go and sanctify yourself. And come with me to the sacrifice. And he sacrificed. And Jesse and his sons, he called into the sacrifice. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely, uh -uh, God must not reject this kind of a guy. Ah, This one is stronger than Saul. And you better woo. He's stronger than Saul. The Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, for I have, look up, refused him. He did not say rejected. He wanted to enter. I blocked it. That's what it means. Do you understand? He did not say rejected. He said, I have refused him. He said, he qualified in certain respects. But as he wanted to come in, I caught him. I refused him. Sent him back. Somebody, the Lord will not refuse us in Jesus' name. Whatever I will lay my hands upon, that will make you to refuse me. Father, let me not do it in Jesus' name. Father, let me not do it, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that will lay my hands upon, whatever I will be called, that will make you to refuse and reject me 
Father, let me not become it in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. So they were there. And God refused this one, rejected this one, turned against that one. And he said, are these all your children? And Jesus could not talk. He said, actually, it's not as if I don't have another one. But that one. Now, face these ones. Pray very well again. Maybe God will still choose one of them and say, no. If you don't go and bring that one, we are not going to sit down. They couldn't sit until David came. Somebody, they will not sit until you have called. Ah, uh-uh. I said they will not sit until you have called. In the mighty name of Jesus. When God beam his light on you, sir, the world will stand still for you. David. Number six. Everlasting mercy and love. Hallelujah. I love this man. Very powerful man. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, when the messenger of, we are not reading 1 Samuel 15, I'm just telling you. When the messenger of Saul was describing this guy, ay, 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 oh, ah, was describing this guy. I love, I wrote it in my Bible, David's credentials. When you see the description, and you now look at the David standing before Goliath, you say, I it. It is too odd. Too odd. They are not the same at all. But that was the man in him that the servant of Saul saw. Somebody is tying you will come to the fall. I say that prince in you, that princess in you, they will come to the fall in the mighty name of Jesus. David. Let us read. Isaiah chapter number 55. From verse number 3 to 7, Isaiah 55. From verse number 3 to 7, incline your ear and come unto me and hear and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of David. David, first Samuel. There is second Samuel. There is kings. First kings, second kings. Is that not so? There is also chronicles. Before you now start talking about other books, before you get to Isaiah. How many years? About a thousand years. Up until the time of Isaiah, God was still talking about the sure mercies of a dead man a long dead principality he had died many years look at what Jeremiah said about him look at what Jeremiah said about him Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter number 33 from verse number 17 to 22. Jeremiah 33, 17 to 22. The same man. You know we have not read Samuel for David. We didn't read Samuel. We didn't read uh, this one. Where his story was written. We are reading books that were written about a thousand years after he had died. For you to look at the faithfulness of our God in the life of somebody who built relationship. In the life of somebody who is able to win trust with God. So nothing can compare to it. Nothing. The Israelites are still partaking of this grace till today. I'm telling you. They are still partaking of this grace, this sure message of David. Let's read. For thus said the Lord, David shall never want a man. <laughs> Jeremiah is after Isaiah. She be you know. Is that not so? Now, uh, David had died many years and the nation was already in turmoil they had gone to captivity they had returned they had gone again and this man was telling them a hey, dust said the lord he said for thus said the lord 
David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel even after they went into captivity. Neither shall the priest and the Levite want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to sacrifice for how long? Look at it. I can't hear you continually. Hey, this is our God. This is our God. What do you take him for? Sir, the Babylonians cleared the whole of Israel. When many of us don't understand, when they say that one nation conquered another nation, the nation that is conquered, what they do to them, <laughs> what they do to them, it is people kill themselves as the enemies are breaking their city. Do you understand? People see that the enemies are breaking the walls of their city like this. They commit suicide. Instead of falling into the hands of the enemy. Some gather their entire family. You understand? Poison themselves. It's as, as terrible as that. Because they know that when those foreign soldiers march into your city, it's not like modern time where you say there are uh, rules of engagement and United Nations shatter, which, which, oh, shatter, oh, it is shattered. <laughs> you understand? You say, prisoner of war has right to, it's only to die. <laughs> Sir, when they march into your city, hmm, everybody, they ring bell, everybody march out, line up, you burn down everywhere, pack your own goods, you carry it on your head and follow them to their own city. They will now march people they know the number of slaves they need. It is able-bodied men and women. They kill every other person that is not interested. They are, they are not interested in it. They make the people burn down their own idol worshippers, uh, whatever. The gods that they like the gold and the silver on it, they say, oh, yeah, carry, carry, carry. <laughs> you carry it. You see, uh, uh, in this city, we must not touch this god. Who, who told you? When they flog you, say, can you open your king? Who open your king? Who open a woman go carry and put for it. Say, woman, no, they do go. See, I'm. Now, woman go carry and put for it. Go that captivity. Sir. And after that one had been done, God now sent the prophet to say, in this city, that there will be no want a man that will not sit on the throne of sin. Are you not going to stone that prophet? He said, people are, priests will still offer meat offering inside this same place. I said, ah, is it not possible now? Sir. When Jesus was predicting the fall of Jerusalem, do we have the time? When he was talking about the fall of Jerusalem, they told him, his disciples told him, see, ah, look at it. He was sitting on Mount Olive. He was looking at the temple. The temple was shining inside sun. And he said, ah, Master, look at it. They were very proud of that temple. Look at the great stones. That was the second temple. The one Solomon built has been destroyed. This new one. They were looking at him. He now said, hmm. he said the time is coming. Not one stone of this your temple will stand on the other. He said, he now began, he said, come and even tell us, when will the time of this, the sign of this time be? He said, you will hear war, rumors of war. That thing that happened, it happened in AD 70. Yes. It started in AD 67. You can Google it. The Jerusalem revolt. It's on your Google, uh, Google search engine. Now, he said, when this time come, he said they will build bulwark around Jerusalem. They will cut off the trees. Use it to build fence around the city that you'll not be able to run. Say if you don't go on time, if they are able to head you in, everybody is doomed. That was what happened to them. General Vespasian, he led the Romans, the, 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 the Jews revolted against the Roman procurator, the Roman governor. They now brought soldiers. So when they got there, they encompassed the city and Caesar died. 
in Rome. The general that led them, General Vespasian, he was the one that was appointed to be the, the king, the emperor in Rome. So he left them. So the Jews thought that the siege had been broken. It was what Jesus predicted, that there will be a break. When you see that break, take off. He told them, when you see abomination standing side by side of holiness, see, you should know that the end has come. Those of you in the rooftop, don't come down to take your cloth. Run. Those of you in the farm, from there, run. Don't come into the city. You understand? It is like a picture of what will happen at rapture. He used Jerusalem. Jerusalem is like a timepiece of God. So he used them to be See, when you have seen that one, you should know that the end is near. So, the people that they met in Jerusalem that day, the people they met, so, people were eating their own children. They destroyed everybody. They sold all of them to slavery and dispersed the land. That is the reason why to, today the Jews are struggling to survive in their own country. Why? Because their country has been given a new name, Palestine. It was the Romans that gave them so that they would not be able to come back. And they were away for about 2,000 years. Yeah. So the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. So now, if a God says that the land will still be inhabited, after those kind of destruction, sir, no human being will even want to believe it. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. How? Let's, let's read on. Pastor, don't digress too much. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus said the Lord, if I can break my covenant of day and my covenant of the night, and, there, and that there should be not day and night in their season, that is, day will not follow day, night will not follow night, day will come, the night will follow it. Has it been broken before? Ki arowa. Ki arowa wa tele. Koma se oson. Koma sale. That there will be morning. You understand? And there will be no night. Has it been? You see, until that covenant is broken. Then, may also my covenant be broken with whom? David. My servant. These are people that are going into slavery that this man is talking to. That he should not have a son to reign upon his throne. There is a question here. There is a question here. I don't know whether you will see it. And with the Levites and the priests, my ministers, as the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister to me, praise the Lord. This is a man that had died. Number seven, Elijah. Elijah the Tishbite. Ah, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Elijah, first Kings chapter number 17, from verse number 1 to 16. First thing, Kings 17, from 1 to 16. Do we have questions? Please let me see hands. I can see three hands only now. Four. Should we stop here now? We should continue. Okay, the Lord will bless us. And because I don't know how many questions each person will have. I prefer we'll have many anyway. Elijah. Raw power. Raw power. This one, there is no grace. Moses still carry grace. Moses was raw power and grace. This one is power. No grace. Very dangerous man. Number one, verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, The Lord God of Israel, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain this year, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence. He spoke. What he said, God knew. 
I'm sure he didn't consider the implications. He said, there will be no rain or dew. For this year, according to my word, and he was living inside that same place. What it meant was that he, would, he too would go hungry. Is that not so? There will be no crop to harvest. So, if people don't harvest, now, first fruit, now him, prophet, they chop. They will not bring first fruit to him. They will not bring offering to him. So, as the people are starving, he too will starve. God now told him, this boy, you don't carry your mouth, scatter this country. See, get the hands and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook of Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have, I have, I have, not that I will, before you speak, I have made provisions. I have commanded ravens to feed the, to feed the dead. Now, look at this. There are so many lessons here. Before he spoke, God had made preparations for him. Why? He had this bond with God that God could see through him. And so, provisions were made ahead for him. If you have a relationship that is strong enough with God, provisions will be made ahead for you. Not after you have prayed, pray, 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 pray. God will now look and say, Well, well. <laughs> Nobody say you'll be a better person, but uh, may not be say people go think, say I did wicked. May you just take. You carry a while ago. <laughs> no. Provisions were made ahead for him. Praise the Lord. You see, God is. Is very keen on relationships. Very, very, it's very important to God. The relationship with Him is very, very important. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. So, and the, the, look at the people that, the birds that God said should feed Him. They are ravens. Ravens are very, 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 very stingy. But they were the one to feed Him. Look at this also. How would they get the bread? And look, let's, look, let's even see the description of what they were feeding Him. And so he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He did according to the word of the Lord, not according as he thought was good. Not according to what the people believe is the right thing to do. He did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by Brook Cherit. That is, before Jordan. And the ravens brought him what? Stolen from where? Eh? Yeah. Stole it from where? Where did they steal it from? How did birds become bakers? How did they begin to roast or fry meat for him? Eh? The guy does the chop burger for that place every day. Sir, but how? How? Our God's ways are unsearchable. So in trying to bake bread, do you know how many ravens will die inside the fire? Have you considered that? In trying to bake bread, you know they have to knead it, make it into a dough, mix some things. How many ravens do you think that thing will consume? <laughs> so, the way God does his own things, there is a bakery in heaven that is making those things. The angels will just come as ravens and they will bring it to him. Somebody, there is provision for you. Every one of us. Our God is not wicked. There is provision for everyone. All we need is to build trust with God. Let him trust us enough to release this provision to us. Let's trust. It's not a question of pray, 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 pray. You know, we human beings, we have been raised by pastors who will tell you that they fasted for 350 days in a year. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a lie. You understand? I'm not saying it's a lie. We too want to be like that. But he didn't tell us he prayed that prayer for his son to get university admission. Do you understand? 
He prayed that prayer for his relationship with God. He didn't tell us he prayed that prayer so that God could build him a house. He prayed it because of his relationship. Some of them don't even remember to eat. I know one of these are babas. If he's not fasting, by 2 a.m., 2 p.m., he has not eaten. He has not even, <laughs> he does, he has not even drank water. By 2. My father in the Lord, when he was alive, he takes his only meal in a day by 2 p.m. Only meal in a day. Not first, not second, not last. The only one by 2 p.m. Once, and that is all, for the whole day. I now want to be like him. Hey? It's about 70 something years. His body does not even need so much food anyway. He was not like that when he was my age. You understand? So, because I tell you that I fast every Wednesday, or I fast every week, does not make you too to go and start fasting because that is the way our pastor said it is good. Build your own relationship with your God. Don't join me in doing 500 days of fasting in one year. 500 days in one year, 365 days. Inside it, I fast 500. Don't join me in doing it. Christianity is not a competition. It's a relationship. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. He brought him bread and egg, and I said bread and egg. I think I like that. <laughs> it tastes better than... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Bread and, egg, bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. Hi. Hey, he drank of the brook. And it came to pass, after a while, that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And it did not remain there as praying. He did not stand there praying. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth unto Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded the widow woman to sustain thee. Look at me. Look at me. Everybody look up. Now, he was on the, at the brook. The brook dried up. God had made another arrangement for him elsewhere. He did not make that arrangement in that country. Because everyone in that country was starving. Am I talking to you now? But he made an arrangement in a place where maybe he looked at the whole of that Tyre and Sidon. He could find only one woman. See, having only one small flower and one small oil. So yeah, go and multiply this woman's food. So he took him there. God is our shepherd. The Bible says we shall not want. We shall not want means not that we will not want. Not that we must not want. It is an optional thing. Shall not. If you choose not to want, you will not want. Because you will follow the principles that he has laid down for you. As you follow those principles, you will learn them. By the time you grow in that principle, you can hold them and use them for you. This is what this man did. He met the woman with only small oil, small this, and he told her, go and make bread for me, a cake. And the woman was going. And the woman said, no, I can't make cake for you, Baba, only. <laughs> Say, which kind of cake? Let's read it. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman, not a widow woman, not some widow woman, the particular widow woman, how was he able to identify her? He had seen her in a dream of vision. Praise the Lord. Ha, pastor. Now, so the Bible talk. Okay, give me another reason, another uh, uh, story that would make him to be able to identify a woman he had never met. The same way the Lord used to talk to him, he, the same way God used to give him this instruction, and he went and he met the woman. He would have seen the woman in a dream or in a vision. Or go, the woman picking stick at the gate is your widow. I say, okay. So when he got there, he saw the woman picking stick and he called to her. Let's read. They're gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, 
Fetch me. I pray thee. The man don't thirsty by. He was the man hungry. He still did thirsty. He now said, Let us use gradual method. Say, I'm going to gradual method. Yeah, more gradual. Graduation. I'm going to about graduating. He was beginning to small, small. Say, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel. The man said, Okay. If na test won't kill you, I feel still help you. And the woman went and, and as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, Mba, 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 ta. <laughs> And he said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, and that they may eat and die. The woman had, she had figured it out, there was no way. Other than those, let's eat this one and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. You see, let's dwell here for a while. You see, for by the grace of God as a prophet, I understand a deeper truth here. A, a deeper truth. A servant of God can use this principle to promote anybody into anything. Do we understand? A servant of God can use this thing to promote the poorest person on earth into the level of riches that has never happened in his lineage before. All he needed to do, if, if this person meets this criteria, he goes before God and starts crying. Say, give me this person as my paymaster. <laughs> give me this person to be my paymistress. And Things will begin to happen in that person's life. First of all, yokes that minister poverty in the life of that person will start getting broken. I'm telling you. The person may have a problem. First, they may sack that person from his place of work. Why? You say, ah, you say, this is a total manage. You want to tell you, ah, Baba, you're a little bit You just bring. The work, teacher work where is still the money, they don't suck him. This prophet now useless man. Now he make calamity to come to this person's life. If they did not suck his MD, that would not have become a proprietress. <laughs> oh man. Yes, sir. Turn by Ali and Gouvanti. Oh, the Mapon, why are you They don't pursue you for Gouvanti. You know, go no see the fine person for Gouvanti to employ him. So, there is, there will be the shaking together. <laughs> You understand? <laughs> Before <laughs> things will now start rising. That's how it happens. I have experienced it repeatedly. 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 You see, the challenge with many of us is that uh, the Lord will help us. It's very deep. It's very, very deep. There are many people in church that are not billionaires by God's decree. No. They are not. God did not make them rich people. It is the pastor that declared them rich. That's it. He just decided that this is what I want in the life of this person. He has the relationship enough with God to tell God this is what I want. And God told him, show him, this is this person that you are asking this thing for. He said, Daddy, give him. I know how to handle him. And God will give him. But when that person misbehaves, if he goes back to God and says, hey, 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 go and, go and manage your problem with him. You are the one that made him rich. I did not want him to be rich. I know him. 
I knew what I saw in him. That's it. That is why. If you follow a prophet, if you follow a prophet, you can achieve the impossible. Yes. And you will achieve the impossible. But be careful. See that the Lord says the Lord that raised you up will not break you. Because as God is bringing, raising you up, if you become like this, the man himself can break your window. All he needs to do is go and tell God that I am tired of this man. He's changing himself into you in my life. You grow. You are becoming rich now. Sunday service, you organize birthday party at all. Half of the church came to your house. They are drinking champagne. Sir, the man finished service. He said he's come and bless you because you just bought him a car. He didn't know you have started church in your birthday party. He said, church party. He now got there, he saw everybody. That day, he returns your car. You are your own. Praise the Lord. Be careful. Be careful. God has a replacement for everybody. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Ah, let's read on. Hey, please, hands up. Let me see. Let me see your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, let's stop here. Let's stop here. I have seen six hands. Any hand here? Okay, let's go. Number one, where are you? Let's hold you up. Let's hold you up. I did not give you number. I gave you number now. Okay, raise those hands again. Don't worry. No, one. Two, three, four, five, six. I didn't see you. Seven. Any other person? Oh, yeah, let's have number one. A round of applause for Jesus. Ah, somebody is not clapping. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to take us back to that book of Samuel where God told Samuel to go to the house of Jesse. Okay, for Samuel to go to the house of Jesse. Yes. Okay. Can you find it? For Samuel. I'm searching for it here too. Where you ask him to take an effort. Okay. okay. Verse 2. And someone said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an effort with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. Okay. Yes. Now, it is not recorded in the Bible that Saul asked. Or even met him to ask him what he has come here to do. Yes. Now, is it not possible for him to just go even if so, ask him question and tell him what the Lord asked him to go and do there? Okay. It's not possible for God to at least shield him or protect him for so not to kill him, even if he says the All truth. Right. God bless you. Amen. The question you are asking me actually should have been meant for somewhere. But, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> But uh, you will still meet him. When we get to heaven, you will meet him. So you'll be able to ask. Just make sure you get there. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is how God chose to do it. He could have, he could have even made David to come to the house of Samuel. And Samuel will anoint him there. Is that not so? God could have done it. But God wanted him to go to Bethlehem. You understand? So that he will first of all offer a sacrifice. Tell all of them to sanctify themselves. Then he will now anoint them after the sanctification. Do you understand now? So that if you read the story of the anointing oil, where God was giving Moses the instruction on whom to pour the oil on, it cannot be poured on everybody. There are specifications. You understand? So the person must be sanctified. That was what happened. Do we understand it now? The Lord will bless us. Okay, yes. 
With that word that God asked him to say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. He's not as say I have come. I am. I am. It's God okay. that came to God sacrifice. Did so. uh, okay. All right. That he just went as that. a representative of God. I am okay. come to sacrifice. All right. Thank you, sir. Amen. God bless you. Next person, number two. A round of applause for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, sir, uh, we learned that sin and disobedience make God to refuse a man. Sin and disobedience? Yes, sir. Which man? Eliab? Uh, any man, sir. Any man? Yes, sir. Ah, sin and disobedience. Sin and disobedience. Hey, disobedience is sin now. Yeah. Is there another thing? That makes God to reject the man? Yes, sir. Sir, those are the two basics. So, in fact, the basic thing is sin, because under sin there is disobedience. Do you understand what I'm saying now? The basic thing is sin. If there is no sin in somebody's life, sir, ah, for God to disobey, he refuse that person. It takes. So the the, the because whoever sinned is of the devil. So if you don't belong to God, why should God now accept you? So God bless you, sir. Okay. In other words, or let me put it this way: Is there a, can God? Deliberately refuse somebody who is still who is not a sinner. It's not a sinner. It's possible. Was. It's possible. Maybe an act of God, just yes, for His purpose or for anything. God bless you. It's possible for God to re, like Eliab came before God. For example, let's look at that example. Now, God wanted him to be a priest, not a king. For example, God will reject him from the kingship. So that the purpose of God for him is not to be a king, is to be a priest. So go and be a priest. That is, for example, so somebody that is not a sinner, is not living in sin, he may want promotion in his place of work and God sack him. And he's not a sinner. Because the purpose of God for him is to be a musician. Are, are you getting it now? So he will say, ah, and I did my best to make sure I get that MD position. I did this, I did that, I prayed, I fasted. You understand? But God has not called him to be the MD. God can tell him, resign. As he has prayed, pray, he say, ah, this is enemy, oh, how can enemy say I should resign? Ah, Holy Ghost, fire, every enemy who does not want me to eat the fruit of my labor from my father's house. All those kind of our, our, Jingoism, <laughs> you understand? And God say, resign, resign. <laughs> because the assignment God has for him is not to be the MD. He has outlived his usefulness in that place of work. Do you know that if he doesn't leave, hey, terrible thing can happen to him. Oh. I'm telling you. I know. Let me tell you this story. Do I have the time? A man told me that in his place of work, sit down, sir. God bless you. Do you have another one? Okay, God bless you. Now that in his place of work, that he was sitting down one day and somebody came to him and said, Ah, you see, I have been seeing revelation about you for more than two months. One elderly man wearing white has always come to be asking of you in my dream. Elderly man, is he my father? He said, I don't know, it's an elderly man. He said he's looking for you. Ah. And he cannot come to me. He had that one. Later, another person came to him. He was seeing it. He didn't know. He didn't know anything about being called or being a born again Christian. He didn't know. So he said, another person came to him. He said, hey, I see an elderly man looking for you. Saying that you should fast seven days. Old. He said, me fast seven days. He said, better go and pray so that he will tell you. He now connected the two revelations together. You understand? He now began to pray. He told his pastor. So, he started praying. He prayed for four day, day one to maybe five. He went to his MD's office. You understand? That one was eating rice. That one now bring another spoon from inside the drawer. Put it inside the rice. Say eat. By the time he took on the fifth day of fasting, by the time he took the first spoon, he realized he was fasting. <laughs> you understand? So he went to his pastor to tell him. Pastor said, Ah, 
you will have to start all over. He said, okay. So he fasted the seven days fasting unsuccessfully like three times. Three times. The day he now finished, eventually, he finished the fasting. His boss had been changed. You understand? That one now took him to their MD, who was a soldier. The soldier now brought a resignation letter for him and told him, resign now. Resign now. By fire, by thunder, he resigned. He said as he was climbing down the stairs, going, the man called him, Ole <laughs> He said he didn't know what he stole. He didn't know what he stole. He was disgraced out. In crying that the disgrace the man gave him, called him a thief, the Baba that they have been seeing appeared to him. He said, I'm the one that served you. I have been telling you that I have duty for you in my house. You are not doing it. He became a pastor eventually. He still does not know what he stole. As of the time he was telling me, he still did not know what he stole. He went back there. The Oga accepted him. They jubilated. They talked. They gisted. He didn't remember he called him a thief. The boss didn't remember. When God has an assignment for you, things will work. River can flow uphill against you. <laughs> if you don't quickly go and answer the call, the Lord will bless us in Jesus. So, you may not be a sinner. But God may refuse you from becoming whatever because he has another purpose for you. Next person. Quickly, 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 quickly. A round of applause for Jesus. If you are clapping, let's clap very well. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My first question, sir, is how possible is it for a man to obey God 100%? It is possible. All God needs. See, God is not looking for you to be holy. Do you know that? Hey, you don't know. It's strange, Abby. God only needs you to surrender. <laughs> you understand? He only needs you to do what? Just surrender. In surrendering, in surrendering, God will take you. It will, take, it will carry you. He will take over. So He will be the one taking you along. Not you going by your own steam. So that is how it is possible to obey God 100%. The more you surrender, the more you realize you need to surrender more. It's a wonderful journey. A man came here, one of my fathers came here this afternoon. He even gave me money. I kept it on the altar here. It's 500 naira. Only one. 500 naira. Not 1,000. 500 naira. It is precious to me. It's precious to me. The man talks about evangelism as if, you know, with so much passion. <laughs> you understand? So much passion. So he came, he picked up some of our tracks. He was going for evangelism. You understand? He now was putting his hand into his pocket. Put his hand into his pocket. I said, I was, what is this Baba looking for in his pocket? He now said he wants to bless me. And he gave me this brand new 500 naira note. Ah, it was so precious to me. I quickly came and put it on the altar. He's there. You understand? Because the man he evangelizes like his breath. He has passion for the things of God. Totally surrender. He's an elderly man. You don't, God is not looking for you to try not to sin. No, you can't try. You, in fact, the more you try, the more you fail. Just surrender. Once you surrender, sir, you will take over from there. The things you are doing now, many of them are sin. You don't know. As you grow, following him, you say, oh, God, last year, I did this one. I'm sorry. Say, no, yeah. just come. Follow me. Follow me. <laughs> you follow. All he needs is for you to surrender. Nobody can live without sin. Nobody. Nobody. 
I'm not telling you that because nobody can live without sin. Continue committing. <laughs> no. You, on your own, you can't. All you need to do is to surrender. You will take over from there. Take over from there. And you know, surrender means that you will not go back to yesterday. Surrender means continual following. Surrender means continually remaining in his presence. Surrender means letting go of everything so that you can please him. That's what surrender is. God bless you. So I will not tell lie. You are not ready yet. I will not bear false witness against my neighbor. You are not ready yet. I will make sure I don't abuse anybody. You are not ready yet. Just surrender. It will not be possible for you again. God bless you. Amen. Second question. All right. Sir, when we see uh, concerning vision to another person. Okay. Now, when we see a vision to somebody. You saw a vision concerning a person. Yes. All right. And uh, my question now is that there are some people that uh, you cannot reveal that vision to. You cannot tell them, yeah. Yes, because right. according to the uh, way we are learning, that. Uh, so my question now is that kind of a person that you cannot tell the vision to, and that vision is very important. Important to whom? To, to him or to you? To the person. Ah, who told you it's important to him? Ah, okay, sir. For example. Okay, what if you saw a vision that he was about to die and he was interested in dying? Ah. <laughs> so that's all. In fact, that is the area I'm even, that is the example I wanted to make you. Uh, eh. That you see somebody that is about to die. Eh. Now, because that, that thing has happened to me sometimes ago. Okay. So we saw, uh, it, though it was not me particularly. Okay. So th the person now told me, a very close person, about that person. Because I had that guy. The person they saw the revelation well close to me. Okay. So I now told you, the, the, the woman, let me just say, my brother's wife saw that revelation. Okay. To a sister, and we were friends. So I now told her, then I was not even, I was just going to church. So I now told her that, ah, me, I cannot tell her, tell this kind of a revelation. Oh, then, oh, 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 ah, what will I do? <laughs> so it was just, she was now telling me that since I was close to them, okay. that I should, so the pressure was so much, so I have to. You now told her? Yes. Okay, what, what now happened? Ah, if not that, because we were living in the, uh, police barrack then. Okay. Even that my brother too was of a higher rank. You wanna, our, police will carry you. My consumer is the room. Hey, you see? You see now? <laughs> so you now the, 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 the lady was now afraid of that revelation. So the 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 person you saw in that they saw in that dream, did she eventually now die? No. She didn't die, okay. Okay, God bless you. So sir. Like I, I'm among ourselves here now, you saw a revelation. Is it the person I should go to or I come to you? God bless you. It depends on the closeness between you and the person. If there is no closeness between you and the person, you tell the pastor. The pastor can decide to tell the person. The pastor may decide to pray and not tell the person. Because there are some people, even inside churches, if you tell them you saw a dog or a chicken run, running around them that day, they will visit 30 Babalaos that same day. They will visit 200 churches. Before you know what is happening, even that vision can kill them. So the pastor may not even tell them, we just pray. You can cancel it right there. If there is need, if there is, because revelations are either uh, warnings, promises, or there are three Instruction. instructions. God bless you. So if it is a warning, the person will need, if it's so important that the person must be told, then can be told. But if it is something that, because there are some way you put something down, it can land you inside police station, that the pastor will just call him and tell him, oh, brother, you are a wonderful man. You will live long. I see this happening to you. Wonderful things, wonderful things. What he is saying is not flattery. He is canceling those negative revelations. 
Do you understand now? It's cancelling those negative revelations. That's what it is. God bless you. Uh, this is my third question too. All right, God bless you. I love like it. Here now, God told Samuel to go and appoint uh, David. Yes. For he sold him to make a sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. He said, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. What was that sacrifice, sir? He took an effort then. Eh? Was that really a sacrifice? It or? was. It was a sacrifice. Okay. Eh. See, what he was to go anoint David straight, but it will be a crime against the king. You don't make kings too in the same city. So that one will kill him. And he told God so. And God told him, carry an ephah, go there. Say you have come to offer sacrifice. And he did it. And he offered the sacrifice. And he, he, he told him, invite the family of Jesse to that sacrifice. He did. I'm sure by the time the elders see the family of Jesse, they will have been thinking that there is a very important reason. Because that was the only family that was not part of the elders that was invited. Even the elders did not bring their own children. You understand what I'm saying now? So Jesse came with his own children. They would know that there is a... And they, you know, people that somewhere came, they were uh, trembling. They couldn't ask him, why did you call... You understand? So he has his reason. God bless you. My next question, sir. All right, God bless you. Uh, when the brook dried up, the brook died up, yes. So God directed Elijah to, Elijah, to, to the Sarifat. Woman. So when, when he got there and he asked the woman for water, on her way, he now asked for food. Right. Uh, now, can Because we... It's graduational methodology. Yes, sir. So according to the teaching that he might have seen a revelation to recognize that woman. Yes. Now, sir, can we say also that the woman obeying him too mm. because at that particular time dangerous time exactly mm. bring me water and as he was going water graduated to food uh -huh. now if that uh what can we say about that woman too for him for her uh -huh. to obey without telling man of god that ah sir it's only what i have for that i will give no you food. carry our Allah, go another place no food here oh. god bless you you see the woman had only one thing to do. She be the cake, the meal who serve two. Extend to three. The man himself had said, For thus said the Lord. You understand? So the woman was ready to extend it to three because of thus said the Lord. And it is very easy to prove that kind of thus said the Lord. If it's a useless one, they will have eaten lunch. Abi, time of dinner came, they start praying again. That is the day Elijah will, Elijah will have to leave the house. Abi, no be so. If, okay, normally, worldwide, people normally eat three triangular meals per day. You, you understand? Now, this one came in the afternoon. Let's say afternoon. They ate, they ate lunch. And time of dinner now come. Baba is still somewhere praying. Sir. By the time he come back from that is mountain, they are going to tell him, Baba, you said us there the Lord in the afternoon. <laughs> you used trick to eat cake here. <laughs> Drink water put. The trick you no know, go work this night again. <laughs> Carry your wall go. It's easy to prove God. Very, very easy to prove God. When he has said something will happen. You understand? Let him fail first. <laughs> and don't forget the woman was not a Jew. No, she was not a Jew. So she did not believe in the God of Elijah. But she would want to prove and say, what do we have to lose? She been able to manage this one for this afternoon. Eh, and there is none, none left. Let him now come in the night and see what will happen. And the night they ate, ha. Imagine a lie, a lie, a lie. The morning they ate, ah. See this thing want to be like, I be some floor was left inside the basket. He shake and shake and shake and. <laughs> you understand? Afternoon they ate again. You say, yes, this man, you are a real man of God. And don't forget, there is no way you can be cooking when there is famine and you don't have visitors. Ah, there is no way 
The thing they do, fin, fin, on top of fire. You see, there is this native soup where you go people they cook. If you see now dry paper, they, they take, they go dry down, come put crayfish. If you fluff, we come put them for inside oil, begin frying. Now, the aroma go <laughs> travel rich and quite Everybody who is hungry in that community will become sister and brother to them. And the, the Bible says the woman and her household were eating. You know, bright Joe, where they last are, you go come, come visit them. Now, there you go stay until the farmer is finished. It's very easy to prove God. God bless you. Amen. My last question, sir. Talking right. about. For tonight. Uh, anointing oil. Anointing oil, okay. Yes, sir. You know, my former church, when it is time for anointing. Anointing. So. The man of God will come to the prophet and said he will talk. Now he will ask everybody to stand up. Stand up. Close your eyes. Hmm. Hallelujah. So he will now tell us those that are qualified hmm. for the anointing. So and as he was, as he be saying it, he will let us know that if we take it. Unqualified me. Yes. That, that sin in your life will continue to multiply. See what? Maybe. See that, multiply. Yes, sir. Maybe that person, for example, the fornicator, he will graduate. Hmm. To the but, University sir, of Fornication. You, funny enough, when we are closing our eyes, so after saying all these things, that if you are not qualified, leave now. Leave. Yes, we leave the auditorium. Hey! Hallelujah. Sir, if we are 1,000 here, if I don't be hearing step, at the end of the day, 1,000 will become 100. 100. That's tight. <laughs> so, what I want to ask here now is that here we bless everybody. Yes, sir. So, maybe because I'm a sinner too. <laughs> I bless everybody. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm a sinner. See, what people, the doctrine, I, I don't know anything about that doctrine. I want to convince myself to believe that it is wonderful. I want to tell myself that it is wonderful. Now, but what I know is that, do you know that among those people that stood and received that oil, there will still be fornicators among them. There was a cane, we collected it last month, nothing happened. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You see, it is, God does not want the death of a sinner. Many of us ministers, we want somebody to come and repent. No, 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 become born again. No, 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 be speaking in tongues. No, 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 no. Be qualified for rapture. Now, <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. You understand? Among the twelve of Jesus, Jesus, twelve disciples, there was a Judas Iscariot. There was the doubter, Thomas. There was the garrulous Peter. You understand? There was the, uh, what do I call Philip? You don't calculate the bread. See this bread, with this man, they talk. Two bread, I mean five bread, two fishes. This thing over walk. <laughs> you understand? There were people like that. Eh? And Jesus carried all of them along. They were with him. God does not want the death of a sinner. That person that ran away can run forever to hell. But if he stays, if he stays, he hears the word, faith comes by hearing. You understand? He begins to think. If we are not going to do anointing, let us not do anointing now. If he strays into the church, many people, many church founders strayed into the church. They strayed in from the clubs, from wherever, from hotels, and we became church family. God can use anybody. So, me, I was even thinking he would say everybody should pay one one k. I would have adopted that. What I would just say is, flesh and blood teaches not thou this message, but this spirit. I will not say Lord. The spirit I told you. 
See, as from today, I just carry bell. Back out, everybody. <laughs> One K per anointing or 10, 10 K per anointing. But uh, God will help us. I don't know maybe that is what even the Holy Spirit told that servant of God to be doing. Nobody knows. So I want to make myself to believe that it will be correct. But this is correct. God has not sent us that. God bless you, sir. Ah, man, people there. People there. Next person. Ah. Okay. Thank God, everybody. All hands are down. Eh? Ah, we can't have like four. Please. That was why I said we should stop early. Thank God we have not finished the. Eh. Okay. Objective answer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Objective Praise answer. The Lord. Hallelujah. Look, look at the objective answer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going by um, the story of Look Elijah. Look at the objective answer. <laughs> the story of Elijah that we... Simple objective question. <laughs> simple objective answer. Yeah. <laughs> now simple yes or no. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Sorry. <laughs> going by the story of Elijah that we read, sir. Okay. Um, about having strong relationship with God. Mm. Um, I want us to consider the relationship Elijah had with God and how God backed his words up. Okay. Okay. Now my, my question is this. Does it mean that if I have a strong relationship with God, every of my utterances will be backed up by God? Yes. All? Yes. It's a simple objective answer I'm giving you. Okay, sir. Um, my second question is this. If it is yes, as you have answered, sir, does that mean that everything I say, either it, it, it um, goes you know, in line with the plans of God, yes. everything comes to manifestation? Okay. It's a question, sir. I know. I'm answering objectively. Okay is not an answer. <laughs> Eh? Okay, it's not an answer. At all, sir. Okay. <laughs> it's simple yes or no I can answer. This one that you are giving me, so long a letter. Miriam Abba. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ah, let me try. Let me try. Let me digress from the objectivity to the... <laughs> to the <laughs> Praise the Lord. You see, God has a veto. He has his own veto. But if God has what, sir? Eh? Veto, veto, veto power. Oh. Uh -huh. Now, if you have this relationship with God, all your utterances will be backed up. All. All of it. The Bible says it not allow Samuel's word to fall to the ground. But God is a reasoning God. Do you understand? Our God is a thinking God. If he, and he's merciful too, if he are, if you in anger, Say things against yourself. Or out of whatever. Say things that is against yourself. God can in his mercy cancel it. Veto it from you. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Now, if you in anger or joy or anything, say things in the life of, make pronouncement to the life of people that negates God's purpose for their life. You understand? God can veto those things. Are you getting it now? So that when you now realize that, hey, what I said concerning this person is not supposed to be you. Now, you can now pray for God's mercy for yourself. But God will back up your utterance. I have seen it happen in the life of people. It has happened in my life too. That I said things I'm not supposed to say and it came back to haunt me until I prayed for mercy. God bless you. Amen. It's supposed okay. to be an objective question answer, but you have extended it. Okay, sir. I'm um, so going by the same story yeah. of um, Elijah. Yeah. You know, um, based on his strong relationship with God, he made declaration that affected everyone, but God made provision for Elijah. Yeah. My other question is this. Was there no other person that, you know, had a strong relationship with God like Elijah okay. in that I, same city? I'm not an official of the Census Commission. I will not, I will not be able to know. 
you know <laughs> why why do we have the provision made only for elijah i want to believe that elijah is not the only person that you know had relationship with god yeah you should know you should know you are you are in there <laughs> so you know as a staff of national census commission you <laughs> so as my spiritual father sir i want you to tell me why god chose to make provision for elijah alone Okay, she said, as my spiritual father, I want you to tell me why God made provisions for Elijah. I am deeply unqualified to answer. <laughs> why are you laughing? Are you not the one that asked the question? Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. See, it's, it might, there might be people who have other relationships with God, but it is Elijah's own that was recorded. There might be such people. But, you see, these things are written for our own... Uh, uh, and learning for us to learn. Do you understand what I'm saying now? There are more books apart from the one that is inside the Bible. Do you know that? Yes, sir. There are a, 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 what do they call them? A Kiprika book or be like that. There are books like that. These ones, you know, because the reason the reason for this book is that they look at this book, canonized books that 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 canon is like a measurement something that they used to weigh it see having read this book does it qualify because the bible was written for one man jesus it was written for one man it's about a man is for a man the man that god created you to be that you should be that you are trying to be that is Jesus. Do you understand it now? So every one of these stories, they are pointing at the fallen man. No, the man that was created. Then the fallen man. What he can do, what he cannot do. The disappointment of God. The resolve of God to bring another man. You understand? Being Jesus. Who has the fullness of God and fullness of man? They call him Emmanuel. Because he is living among men. But he is not just men, he is God. And some people will tell you, ah, ah, how can God come and live on earth? Their thinking is that God left his throne <laughs> and came here. And while he was here, heaven was empty. No. No. You understand? So, that is what every book in the Bible talks about that. So, the ones that are gathered that they are the ones that make the 66 books. You understand? So, there might be another one that talks about Elijah. Another Elijah. Maybe Elishua. Praise the Lord. And, but, you know, by the time I joined the population census, commission, the, the record has been destroyed. So, I didn't get to see it in Israel. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I have another question, but I'm certain you won't answer it. Praise the Lord. Ah, don't be certain. No, you... See, please, please, please give me the opportunity not to give me the opportunity not to come. <laughs> Somebody celebrate this lady. <laughs> Somebody, people are not happy. Look at her. Celebrate her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. So I am not yet to I'm argue that. I'm going to disappoint you by answering the Amen. question. Amen. <laughs> I am not yet to argue. Elijah had a strong relationship with God and so he made a declaration that God backed up. Yes. In that city, we also want to believe that there are other people who had strong relationship with God, Hallelujah. though they were not recorded. Mm. My question is this. When Elijah made that declaration... I know the question. <laughs> the way it affected those other people and their relationship with God, how did they fare? Is that the question? Part of the question, not really, okay. sir. When Elijah made that declaration and God backed it up, mm -hmm. other people that had strong relationship with God and then they cried to God, hmm. why is it that God did not change the words of Elijah and you no know, make them live in abundance rather Hallelujah. than back up the Hallelujah. words of Elijah? Hallelujah. God bless you. I want to believe. Ah, why are you running? <laughs> I want to believe that God sent them to the Brukusharot. <laughs> These ones are hypotheses. God, so there will be another book, Charot, book Chama, book whatever. That God will, if they have such relationship truly, that God will take them through to 
Then when the brook dry up, God will take them to the widow of uh, Salama. You understand? <laughs> or oh, widow of Matogu. God bless you. Let's go home, Joe. <laughs> Let's go now. It is five minutes past eight. It is five minutes past eight. Let's go home. Record responsive. Responsive. Recall the questions. Meet the responsive. Collect the questions. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Hey, Korem, let's go home. Korem. Tell your neighbor to stand up. Whoa. Who is like unto thee? People will want to sleep for church. When they enjoy the Bible study, I don't want to go. <laughs> oh Lord, who is when you are singing, everybody will get up to, to thee. Oh, oh Lord, among uh -uh. 